Good afternoon, and thank you for having me here. And I want to say hi to um, friends from the Middle East. So this is like Mazar Kia, so this is getting into the evening. Um, I kind of follow the trade of my, my presentation will be less of a programming part. It will be from more from the user experience and also from the qualitative, even though I love data with some descriptive data. It's very, um, I promised for a lot of data in my uh, abstract, but uh, family obligation and I just came back from uh, standing in to organize a conference in Abu Dhabi given like one month to finish doing that. So in November earlier, so I'm sorry that uh, this will be less data, but I hope I, that it will be um, informative nonetheless. Um, so overview, my question has to do with really much of kind of to see where um, where our researchers live. We ask a lot of students, other people, where do they live in terms of on the web. So this is the same idea of where are our users who are researchers spend their time contributing paper and such thing. Um, it's also, this is an overview, so I'm gonna look at um, some overview and looking at the population and I take a smaller sample set so that I can really get acquainted with the, uh, with the qualitative data from the, we have, each year we have a faculty publication that the Office of Research has produced. The latest is in 2012 because we have a lot of admin change and I have some, so that's the latest data I have so far. And I also select only a few researcher ID system, but balancing between the professional services like LC, uh, name authority, VIAF, and uh, ISNI, and then the other side is uh, what people have been uh, uh, self-registered system, such as ResearchGate and Google Scholars. So these are very much at the prelim preliminary findings because I just look for what kind of stories are these data telling me. I'm not interested in so much of the quantitative, but looking at the qualitative side of things. Looking at the implication for link data environment and also what else that I need to look for. So I have more questions out of this first data set than uh, I going in. So that will be shared with you too. So why is this topic? This is some of my research interests. Early on, I look at projects like place and space for the science mapping, so data visualization, presenting what are the interconnected mapping the knowledge domain. Um, I also had some practical work using his site, which is um, software that using web of science data to extract to see how the genealogy of research, seminal papers, and mapping the um, research domain. And I use that to support a practical project for human trafficking research for our researcher in, uh, in the US while I was working for six years there. <coughs> my current interest really is this. Last year is my first time to come to uh, um, SWIT and a lot had happened since then. When I went back from SWIP 14 in Bonn, I wrote a briefing paper for the our admin to, to cut a map, the planning for the future of the libraries in the big frame and link data context. I have three conference presentation, one for our Army Cow Network in, um, that's the American University system in Middle East and Europe. And also, um, the, I went to Abu Dhabi to organize a conference for Innovative User Group, which is a library system user group, and we discussed link data there as well. And this paper is the third one. So SWIFT 14 really had this much impact. 
uh, for my work now. So then the pilot study, really I just say, okay, what's going on with our researcher? How do they distribute their data? How do they share their scholarly publication and creative works? And how are uh, their names identified in different author identifier system on the web? So the goal is to explore how best to present their data as linked data. So the population and uh, the, the AUC faculty who have publication in the records, and this can be conference paper, creative work, books and journals, so they, anything that, in, that are publishable. The sample set, I used um, the, this, also this publication for that 2012 calendar year. So, oh, sorry. So I have 55 faculty in this, in this uh, data set and I select using the random sampling tool for 45, so making sure that they cut across different discipline and school. But with a smaller department, I can include them all for 10 faculties. Mm -hmm. So I kind of look at different sites for this, not everything that I list in the abstract, but I want to get into um, yeah to look at how their names are presented, but also whatever data that comes to my reading that would inform me. So it's very open and no hypothesis, nothing. It's just really totally exploratory at this point. So my notes on the data gathering um, and analysis. This book alone is only 2012, so it's limited to that year publication, when I went out to Google Scholar or other things, I need to look at the whole researcher profile. So I ended up using the faculty profile. In most universities, if you are required to publish uh, annual report, there's something called Digital Master, which is um, a platform that you submit your citation and different things. So AUC profile, is using the same tool. Uh, it's called um, e-repertoire. So we, every year we have to submit our publication and update CV. So that's where I have to look because the 2012 alone is not enough to identify um, any name in, in the registry system. So I use different things, the names, the profile photos even because I know this faculty by face, we live in a close-knit community. And the institution also, because they move around, we have a high mobility group here. Publication and other CV information. And that's a limitation of the profile. Once you leave the campus, that profile will be down. So this will be the implication for uh, web archiving as well. And the data is not open because this is from the database. And it's also limited to lang English language publication because AUC language is, uh, official language is English. Um, so I look at two tiers of service, professional service and the LC name authority, uh, virtual international authority file, the international standard of national identity and name, name identity and Google Scholar. So because these are better with the multilingual data. The self-registered service, on the other hand, scholars themselves use English for their profile, even though they may have other publications in different languages. And I limit to open data, so anything that Google or any search engine can find. The authors are also identify themselves as in Romanized names. So if they have Arabic names, I learned enough Arabic to write, find that in the system, but, not, but they're not gonna publish that in Arabic on the professional side. So I want to review the system. Um, so as I mentioned, I have um, LC, 
the Library Congress Authority, ISNI, the Virtual International Authority file, ISNI through VIF, uh, ResearchGate, and also Google Scholar. The last two are the one that researcher register themselves. Now, Elsie, if you're a librarian, you are familiar with this, but I can't assume that for everybody. So these are the system that is there with one form of heading with reference from the other form using research and publication as a way to reference the name uh, and cross-reference. So for example, this is a very short one, uh, Professor Anna Gilgashia. She has only one reference to her book. So in her own profile, you get a course longer system. VF is a bit better because it does integrate national libraries around the world and it's a single OCLC hosted name authority services. So you can see that these are VF contributors from around the world. Um, the other one I look at, we have already linked with the international standard name identifier. Um, <coughs> so in VF, if you search in, in VF, you already f will find the, the ISNI in it too. Now, the other system, so those are the ones that the professional create for the researcher. Now, I found that a lot of my researchers live here in ResearchGate. It's a new system filed in 2008. They say this is for research, uh, scientists for scientists, and it is really now in Germany. It's found by the physician, Dr. Um, Dr. Elliot. Mandish and uh, also Dr. Seren Halfmeyer. Right now, it is not an open access. You can see from Google, but to get the paper, you have to sign in to get that sharing going with your colleagues. But it's free, but not innocent. I put that in there because um, Bill Gates and other companies invest in research gate because they can get the research data for their own use. So this is like a lot of money, I think, going into ResearchGate. So for example, you can see why the user will like this. Uh, I have the Professor Clement Henry. He has two profiles, one as an emeriti in Texas, one for AUC. And he has one of the high ranking score. His citation score is much higher than the others. So and it's not by the age, he's retired, but he has like in everything, in LC Authority, in RIF, in ResearchGate, in Google Scholar, so he really established himself and he got a lot of followers. And you can see that that's a social media function and also um, on the analytics. So if you like to feel good about your research products, and project, this is something you get update. Research gets sent me too many <laughs> emails. I used to have my paper in Digital Commons. I get, uh, it tells me how many get download, who download, and from different countries. So those are nice to have, but research get report almost every interaction you have with anyone. But it is this social, network function that make this to be attractive and give the incentive to people to deposit their data in this system. 
So also I have two for claimant here. Claimant has two double identity. Um, Um, just to make sure that we, you understand, AUC is not a research institute, but it has research labs, and the faculty has some high profile. Um, it has about 6,500 in the enrollment, undergrad and also grad, and with the PhD, some PhD is new, so it's not really high ranking, but that's enough of the faculty who get into LC and also we have, so I try to get to data and conclusion. Am I out of time soon? So the faculty has 40% U.S. nationality, 40% 40 Egypt, 40 Egyptians, and roughly 20% international. The language of instruction is English. So these are my data and that in the sample we have the school, the, big, the two big schools are humanity and social science. It has more presence in this system and the other one is the school of science and engineering. But you can see that when you c compare this data, when they have this all across the board, so the random sampling should uh, be a representative. So we have performed the highest. So the 55 faculty, they have more presence in VIAF, second in LC, NAF, uh, NC5. But between ResearchGate and Google Scholar, ResearchGate has more presence, and ISNI is the third one. So I have to say, okay, so what's happening here? So we have to separate two categories, professional service by LC and VF, and also the self-registered service. The prolific author, of course, they can have the present all across the board, but the discipline will also make a difference. In, in the humanity and social science, they are better um, present in LC. So HATS has 15, and the engineering school has only three, but they are at high level in VF because of the conference proceeding. So publication type is also playing the role. Um, but some of us are not prolific author. We may have book chapters, so these are not going to be present because in the in the OCLC record, we are not included as a main author or uh, additional author. So this will, some of these are some examples. So some implication um, from my finding. So we had to do some local record enhancement for our faculty who has book chapters, encourage authors to also I register for something like ORCID, the ORCID, to create their own profile, even in Mandalay or Google Scholar or ResearchGate. The other two M's, mobility and morbidity, if someone pass away or move away, the, the profile at the institution also be uh, wiped away. So this way, if we have web archiving, that would be another remedy. So in linked data, the challenge is how do we map the linkage among the sites for, on the one hand, for professional service and the other hand for the self-registered service. I want to point out that we invest a lot, I mean OCLC and folks in VF and ISNI had done a great job linking and creating this linkage. Um, but researchers also live and have more fulfill profile in self-registered service. So the pros of self-registered service is they can create their own research identity, their one ease of use, they like their automatic updates, uh, who act, interact with them, who cite them, they like email and also use statistics, these two for their, in, their um, tenure ranking and review. 
And if it's free, they like it better too. And they also like the citation metric and graphs. And they also want to protect their work, so it has to be somewhat close. So research gate is good that it, it shows Google to see, okay, these are the citation, but not the paper itself. You have to register to share the paper. The social network function, they love that collaboration um, and citation linkage. But the con part is that these are English language dominant. We have professors who publish in Roman script and also in uh, Arabic script, so we need to look into those issues. Incomplete data, because they don't update sometime, and publication lists are not you know, all inclusive. So they may or may not be updating their own uh, site over time. So I have a lot more work to do. So I go back to my data and include more. If my researchers are not in any of these systems, are they in ArcsIV, in other, um, in other sites? So I need to look for more of those. The name variance, type publication, tenure ranking, and all of those, and include more from uh, different uh, faculty. But that's also an implication. We are with Army Cal Consortium of 25 countries of the American Liberal Arts Institution. So if we can create some kind of link data platform to link all of Army Cal um, institution together, we can really create much better collaboration. So this is a link data elements that this research hopefully can take it to. So my conclusion is researchers in the 21st century tend to have more scattered identities at their local institution and other professional and self-registered services. The challenge as we go forward to link data model is how to maintain the multiple identity for each researcher, cross-link the data, and provide access to the ID system across the board, not only to the more prolific writers and creators. Um, two more work. So I did link try to look at uh, Karen Smith Yoshimura research from OCLC on researcher identities. And there's also a good article on the relationship between SNI and VF by Anjali and her team. So I want to add that to you. So thank you very much. I'm sorry, I'm between you and the coffee break. So. <laughs>